Hang on to their masks. <laughs> yeah, it's good to uh, it's good to meet, isn't it? Yeah. You know, okay, we can't sing, but we'll do what we can, and that's a real picture of the Church of Jesus Christ over the nearly last two thousand years. You know, about the third century, I think it is. Don't quote me on this, and uh, if I'm wrong, just send a message. And and as Barry said, if you're watching and you do do a face party, let's get the word out. Virus is not going to stop us. Amen. Amen. We are not going to be held back. The church will always rise up. And I think people are saying, is this the end? Well, they've been saying that for 2,000 years. We're not to say, is this the end, but to focus on the end, and the end is Jesus. If you want to know what the end time looks like, it looks like a face of Jesus, because he's coming back. Good. So in the third century, there was a plague, and uh, it, particularly in Rome, it was wiping people out left, right, and center. They thought it was the end of the world. The Christians got blamed. Hey ho, what's new? But the Christians, what they did, they started to look after their pagan people who were blaming them and they loved them and they ministered to them and they came out of it and the church grew. Amen. What do I draw from that? We're coming out of this, friends. Oh, yes. We're coming out stronger. We're coming out more determined. You know, I was thinking how much we take things for granted. I know I have. And just to go to places, just not to wear a mask, just to embrace somebody, just to all these little things. And God says, yeah, I want you to realize that these things are important. They're special. So in this journey, and we're on this like marathon Journey. We're on this, coming through this, we think we're coming out, and then we get a setback. But we're running the race, friends. And that's what I want to talk about today. And it's called the world's toughest race. Now, this is inspired, in case anybody's watching this, and they're saying, I've seen that. That was on Amazon Prime. Well, it was. There's a series. It's 10 episodes. on. If you've got, how many got Amazon Prime? Yeah? Well, it's on there, and it's called, no plagiarization here, World's Toughest Race. Mine's called The World's. <laughs> Amen? So we're okay. We're not plagiarizing anything. There's no, nothing illegal going on here. But it's a, if you... If you're into that sort of thing, we, I don't know about you, but I struggle to find stuff to watch that's okay for my soul. I don't want stuff in my living room. I don't want stuff in my head and in my eye gate and my ear gate that's offensive to me and to God. Amen. So we kind of like struggle. Well, what can we watch? And our son, he said, oh, have you seen this? It's a bit sporty, but watch it. And it is a bit sporty. And it is uh, based on the Fiji Islands. Bear Grylls hosts it. So he's the anchor. And they tr it's 400, let me get my facts, about 416 miles, 417 miles over 11 days. A uh, 1,000 teams and apply. Now get the word team. If, if I could get you to respond, you'd say team. So I'm the Amazon team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a thousand teams applied, 66 got through and qualified. Because they had to have a qualifying to get to a level. 417 miles over F the Fiji Island. If you've got Amazon Prime, have a watch. Now, Amazon Prime, look, I'm... Plug in you, so you plug me, right? <laughs> okay. Plug the gospel. Get some gospel stuff on your program. Amen. Amen. So the, what we want to show, that the Christian life is like a race. Uh, it's more like a marathon, isn't it? And this 
uh, modern day plague, this virus, this pestilence, has been so far like a marathon. A- about a week's time or so, it's 12 months since we stood down from here and uh, launched into a new life and the ministry of rivers. Who would have thought that 12 months later we're walking around in masks and there's all this, it's like this futuristic world that's going on and it's a bit scary, isn't it? But we will come through. We will come through this. And it's like a marathon and we will come out of this. You see, we don't... We will never qualify for this world's toughest race or the Amazon Prime version of it. You wouldn't get in. I'm sorry if I've offended you. I know you think you're fit, but you ain't that fit. These guys, when you see the episodes, it's grueling. It's cruel. And they have to operate as a team and one team member goes... The whole team goes. They can't have like a diminished team going over the finish line. So I just want to say this. What if the church operated like that? Jesus said if one member suffers, we all suffer, suffer, yeah? yeah? So if one person is down, what would happen to this church or your church where you're watching now? What would happen? If, if one member went down, your church had to close. I think we'd change things a bit, don't you? I think we'd sort of shore up. I think we'd start putting into practice the things that we need to put into practice and support one another. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, this is COVID-19 pent-up release stuff coming out here. <laughs> so what... what And this is the opening words from Bear Grylls. If one person goes down in the team, the whole team is disqualified. But none of us would be qualified, would we? But the Bible says that we are. We are qualified. Um, And we are. Actually, I think I've got that on the screen. The whole member, the whole team goes down. Because why am I telling you this? Because as a Christian, and in the Christian faith, um, we are in the world's toughest race. Some people, particularly guys, don't want to join the church. They don't want to be part of it because they think it's a mamby pamby. It ain't. You have to be tough. You have to be strong. But it's strong in the Lord Amen. and the power of His might. Hallelujah. But we are in a race. We are in a battle. We are in a battle for our own, uh, the church to come through this. And it's not only this virus, there's the other virus of other stuff that's going on that's seeking to tear down the very values that we believe in. We've got to be strong, friends. But we have to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And so we can qualify all of us. This is what Paul says. He says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. It's as if we've come to the race and, and we, you know, you had that bleeper on your forehead to see if you got a temperature when you came in. Yeah. Sorry, you can't come in. You got a temperature. When we come to Jesus, whoop! It just goes, you're qualified. You're qualified to come in and be part of the race. But a race it is. We're in the long haul. It's not a quick decision. It's about being a disciple. It's about taking up our cross. It's about he that endures to the what? End will be We're in a race. And these things, when we were worshipping just now, and uh, I was trying, I was tempted to look across to see if there was any masks moving. (laughs) 
secretly singing. If the government's watching, they're not doing it really, really, really. But, you know, the enemy tries to hold us back, but we keep pushing through, we keep pushing through, and we keep pushing through. And this is what happens on these, the world's t- toughest race. It, they, they have setbacks, they have to ride these mountain bikes, they have to swim, they have to wade, they have to climb mountains, they have to do all these things, and they get these major setbacks. And, but they don't go, oh dear, what a shame, boo-hoo, oh, we've got to go home. They say, there's this one guy, the Dralia gears had broken. And they, he, he, if he can't go on, the whole team can't go on. Yeah? So what does he do? He sends out a message to all the other teams. Have you got a spare set of Dralia gears? And they find them. He fixes it. And they get back in the race. If you've got out of the race, get back in. Get back in. We are in a race. So thanks be to God who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the same. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his son. We are part of a team, or you should be. And some people are concerned about this lockdown thing. Will people come back to, the ch- ch- to church? Well, if you think church is individuality, you won't. You're going to sit at home, watch it all on your settee, or wherever you watch it. But if you know that the church of Jesus Christ is the body of people, it's not a building, it's a body of people. If you know that the church is a team, and that you are a team member, and what you contribute... Financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, prayerfully, worshipfully, yes. matters. And if you don't comp- contribute, the whole team slows down. Come on. Yes. Then you need to join and support the local team. If you're local and you think, oh, and there's lots of good churches in, here in Eastbourne, really good churches, nearly as good as this one. So come to New Hope. Hook up. Now all you other church leaders, you know I'm joking. <laughs> the, lot, the Bible has a lot to say about running the race. Some of you are already thinking about those scriptures. You Bible students, you. You're already there. Well, I, there's lots. I've just got about three, and I'm going to just read them, see what God's saying in them, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So here's the first one, which you're already there, aren't you? Hebrews 12. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Oh, wow. You see, there's a cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. What about those cloud of witnesses that were here in 1918? When there was a plague then and it wiped out so many people. There would have been believers in that. What, what are that what's that cloud of witnesses going? It's going, come on, church. Use what you can, when you can, as much as you can. And these clouds of witnesses that have gone on before us through the centuries, and they're saying, 21st century church, come on, keep going, keep running the race, keep going, because God is with you. And let us therefore lay aside every weight and sin so easily clings to us. I've... uh, just started cycling, but it's uh, not, it's cheating a bit, because it's, it's an e-bike. It's not e-bike gum, it's an e-bike. <laughs> but it, it just assists you, it just helps, and um, I'm at that time of life where I just need a little help, you understand. Mind you, I wouldn't have cycled up Beachy Head before, but I went up the other day. Wow, it's great. Um, and some people were up there and they said, oh, you cycled up, well done. I said, it's an e-bike. They said, you shouldn't have told us. <laughs> but anyway, but I'm finding that you have to 
I haven't got the right gear yet, but you need to wear stuff that doesn't hold you back, that you can keep going. And we need to throw off everything. Throw off every habit. I've already talked about what goes in the eye gate and the ear gate and the TV and so forth. Just make sure that nothing's coming in that's going to hold you back. Just as we do in the physical. So we have, we, if we have a good diet, we will be healthier, won't we? And so we have to throw off everything that's not going to be helpful. And so... Uh, and the sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance. Notice that word, with endurance, um, the race that is set before us. Notice that. It is endurance. Sometimes we want to enjoy life, but it is an endurance. But you know what I do? I, I say to God, you know what? We're going to come through this, and this is just another pitch piece in the jigsaw puzzle. When I'm reading the scriptures, and sometimes, how many people find the scriptures hard going sometimes? Come on. How many find sometimes uh, scriptures, reading the scriptures can be a bit of a uh, help towards insomnia? Because you start reading. <laughs> Do you know one of the things I do when I'm reading the scriptures? I say, God, I haven't really grasped that. And I wasn't probably paying full attention to it. But I believe that's the incorruptible seed of the word of God. It's gone into my spirit and it's going to help me in the long run. Amen? Amen. So that's what you do. It's, it's like an endurance sometimes. We keep going. And the race that is set before us and this is where we focus look into Jesus where are we looking Jesus not to what the politicians are saying not to what the scientists are saying but we look to Jesus the author our founder and perfecter of our faith who, who for joy that was set before him endured the cross watch that Jesus entered an endurance course he emptied himself of all but love, says Wesley, in his great hymn. And he entered this, it must have been excruciating at times, and I'm not talking about the cross. I'm talking about walking every day, knowing who you are, and yet you've humbled yourself. And he says, for the joy that set before him, he endured the cross. Why? Because he knew you were coming in. And if you're watching this, if you've not come in yet, get in. Receive Jesus. Be saved. He loves you. He endured everything so that we could be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's okay to shout hallelujah, but we're shouting it. Dis despising the shame. Uh, and it is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. When Jesus walked into heaven... After the resurrection and the ascension. I can imagine what it was like. It wasn't like a cricket match. The whole of heaven roared as Jesus walked in. Having the victory over sin and death and hell. He has the keys friends. He has the keys to this situation. We just need to find out what the key is to unlock it. It's probably repentance. Amen. Come back home, church. Here's another one. This is in uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Paul writes, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? This is where the analogy fails. Because we all get a prize, right? So run that you may obtain it. But you only get a prize in this story with the of world's toughest race. Only those who finished received a medallion. Those who finished first got a great big prize. But those who, who everyone who finished got a massive round of applause and got a medallion. We have to finish. Don't give up. He that begun a good work will complete it on the day of Jesus Christ. 
we know that the day of Jesus Christ hasn't come yet, so he's still completing something in us. Amen? Amen. So we all runners run. But only one receive the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath. But we, an imperishable. So do not run aimlessly. Oh, what are we going to do? But I do not box as one beat in the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I'd be disqualified. Notice the word disqualified. In other words, you've come out of the race. We're not getting into once saved, always saved, question mark or not, or statement. Just we're looking at the scriptures. Not what people have said about the scriptures. We're looking at the scriptures. So we've got one more. Paul says this. It says, not that I've already attained. So he's still in the race. I love the fact some, a lot of preachers, a lot of churches have been preaching from Philippians in this lockdown time. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 12 is a favourite verse of mine these days. He's in jail. He's isolated. He's incarcerated. He is He's in lockdown. And this is what Paul says. The things that have happened to me have served to advance the gospel. What's this virus doing? Serving to advance the gospel. People are getting saved on the internet. We know one church where they've been doing their live stream. Somebody's got saved on it. They're going to get baptised in the sea shortly. Come on. We, we are in this race. So Paul knows that he's, he's going to complete the race. He said, but not that I've already attained, that is complete the race. But I'm already perfected. But I press on. That I may lay hold of that which Jesus Christ has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind We've got to forget the way we did church. And there's a new era coming. There's something creative God's bringing. Forget, oh, we've always done it this way. Well, you, you know what? Last this church or whoever you are watching, you've been forced to move the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> You've been forced to make a change. Still should have a curvature across there anyway. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which uh, Jesus Christ has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not I count myself up for Forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those things that are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, how can we run well? Let me run through this very quickly before I get thrown out. One, accept the invitation to join the race. If you've never accepted Christ, you've not, never been born again, then you're not in the race. You're in the human race, but you're not in the race of faith. You're not in this amazing journey. Accept the invitation. Say, Jesus, I accept. I want to be part of this race. I want to come and be part of a team. So and that's the next point. Join a team, that's a local church. Be accountable, get involved, use your gifting in any ways you can. Number three, develop a prayer habit, personal and corporate. 
How many have been to Zoom prayer meetings? <laughs> They're funny, isn't it? I, when, <laughs> if everybody talks at the same time, it's like, <laughs> mind you, they did it on the day of Pentecost, so it's okay. <laughs> Develop a prayer habit. You say, preacher, I don't know how to do that. Well, it's simple. You actually pray a prayer. It's, God, help me to develop a prayer habit and start. Number four, read and study the Bible. Number five, keep short accounts with yourself and God on a daily basis. Psalm 139 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there's any offensive, wicked way, whichever translation you use. Keep yourself clean and uncluttered. And can daily believe in the precious blood of Jesus as if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Keep short accounts. Have you kept a short account today? <clears throat> number six be ambitious really yes be ambitious for God be ambitious for God and his glory Paul writes he says pursue love that word pursue is ardent seeking after 1 Corinthians 14 1 pursue to know God better. That's Ephesians 1.17. That I may know you. That I may know you. I might know you better. I might have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. The knowledge of him. That the NIV says to know him better. And I put it like this. I want to know Jesus better. So I can be better equipped to make him known. Can I take people to where you are? Be ambitious. I want more of you. In that 1 Corinthians 14 verse. It says. And. Desire earnestly to be filled with the Spirit Amen. and all the gifts daily. This is something I practice and I recommend it. Could take you through all of this on another occasion. Number eight, use your time well. There are no guarantees other than those who trust in the Lord will be saved. There's no guarantee of tomorrow. There's no guarantee that Jesus won't come back before the end of this message. Or the end of this day. You, what if he did? What if he was coming back today? What if this was your last day on earth? How would you spend your time? Spend your time well. So, so we come... We come with this thankful attitude of gratitude. We live in, this is how we use our time well. Be thankful. We live in what Dale Carnegie called, this is from a book called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And maybe we need to read that book. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And he talks about living in daytight compartments. Live for today. Do the best you can today. Pray for each team member Amen. on a daily basis. Develop, discover and develop your God-given giftings. So as he comes into land, yes, the Christian faith is the world's toughest race. But heaven's resources and riches are freely available to all. It's worth the hardships and the setbacks to push through it all. Do you know what? It's not a massive amount of money that I want to receive. It's not even a gold medallion I want to receive. There's only one thing I want to receive. Well done, you good and faithful servant. Have you joined the race? 
Have you felt like giving up? Do you desire to run well, to receive your well done? Can we pray? Is it